Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code VRUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. (laughs) We're here. I'm showing off my new uh, R2-D2, psychedelic R2-D2 poncho blanket uh, attire. And it's it's amazing if if for all the only listeners out there. It is a psychedelic uh, mm. R2-D2s of multiple colors. <laughs> Looks like maybe it's fleece. Is it fleece? Yes, it's a fleece. fleece. It, yeah. it was. I did this thing a couple of years back where it's, it's actually a, a piece of fabric, you know, like uh, I got like two yards of fabric from the Joanne's Fabric Store and just and then just called it a blanket. It was kind of like I had sewed up the edges. Oh, you can't really see. Can you see it? It's kind of just oh, sewed, yeah. folded over on themselves. Yeah, and then uh, just it. made it into a very cheap blanket, but it's almost like an Andy Warhol esque kind of color. You know, I don't know what you yeah. call that color mo- modulation inversion. Looks like it like it might look very sick under black light as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when I came home with all this like weird fabric from the store, Shannon and my wife was like, "What are you going to do with all that stuff?" I'm like, "They're blankets. It's like the cheapest yeah. blanket. They just cost like you know six bucks." Yeah. For a huge blanket, for the, it was perfect for the for when the kids were little and you just needed more blankets all the time. Yeah, you know, little fleece blankets for them, just kind of wrap them up in or put underneath yeah. something or put around something. I feel like young kids and blankets. It's just the more you have, the easier it is. Oh, definitely, mm. and the more that you don't care about how uh, them getting messed up. Per, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Just more, just yeah. more soft fabrics to have laying around on the couch or next to the couch, yeah. and just put all around them. Yeah, like yeah, how they just got thrown up on. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. It throw, throw it away. Exactly, yeah. it didn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just cut, cut, cut that part off, and now we have a smaller blanket. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we did a lot of that for a lot of years, but it's reached the um, you know below fifty degrees in Southern California, where I can officially uh, just wear a blanket as um, as as uh, clothing. But I'm I'm into this. This might be my new Mama Cass era, where I just wear <laughs> large blankets out of the house. I've become Homer Moo Moo sized. No, I was just going to say that you uh, you know you're in your own band when you start wearing Moomus. Like, <laughs> you can't get kicked out of the band. It's, it's like Buzz from the Melvins. Right, it's like yeah. you're in good company. I've, I've, at 40, going on 43 years old this year, I've officially <laughs> like this, entered my Moomoo stage. <laughs> like no one told me that I could truly do whatever I wanted. I can really do whatever I want. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've heard, it. I've heard about it. The DIY do it yourself. I was like, but what if you can really do it yourself? <laughs> oh, how like you... a moo moo yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> MMY. Uh, yeah. How are you guys doing? Good, man. It's just been, <sighs> the, the day's been a, a, a bit of a whirlwind. I was going to say, yeah. we're like officially entering like dad pod stage. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what? wait. You know what? Okay, I got. I've got a half an hour here. When do you have a half an hour? Okay, you have oh. a half an hour in between car rides and uh, who's dropping off who and who's picking up who and. Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I know. It's uh, it's it's fun. This is good. Well, it's the new year. We're doubling doubling the pod, double pod for for your buck. Um, yeah. Well, I just had to do um, the reason why I was late is because I'm I'm um. I'm officially, I'm officially, you know, going for my teaching credential. Yes. And so, um, I've been like, uh, student teaching and, 
subbing and doing all that stuff, fun stuff. And uh, which really is actually fun stuff. It's subbing's like, great. I did I did, I did my rounds. For days. You you know, but you knew you knew me in my teaching days. Yeah, you I shot met the you cover at story. A school, right? <laughs> yeah, did we meet for the very first time at that photo shoot. I met you. We, we must have met or been in the same room prior to that, but officially, Maybe. you know, like yeah, like yeah, we're in a sober enough state of mind where we could remember each other. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Where it wasn't like yeah, maybe. Yeah. I remember being in the same room with him, but I don't. I don't remember why or where. We probably bumped into each other at a cooler or a keg or something. Like, hey, hey, yeah, all right, exactly. all right. Yeah. You're gonna smoke that? You're gonna take that? Okay, I got it. But I had the exciting job of like um, having to drop four pieces of paper for paperwork da- uh, down at the Cal State San Bernardino. Oh. Yeah, which is right down the hill, but right down the hill for me is like a 40-minute drive. God, it was and it then, snowing? Is it bad? No, no, no. It's okay. not snowing anymore. But it's more of just like, wait, what? Oh, and I have to be there till 5. Okay, I have to teach till 3.30, get out, 4. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then I drive down there, get down there, and I got plenty of time. There's even like kids skating on campus and nice. trying to do a You know, it's very like California. <laughs> and, um, and then I get in there and the door's locked. And I'm like, oh, brutal. Wait, no, I did not just drive 40 minutes yeah. to get here. When, oh. and, yeah. And then luckily somebody opened, you know, like I was walking out, just getting ready. Like, oh, I can't wait to email them. And then, you know, like strongly, what, worded, like, strongly yeah. worded emails coming you are your way. Gonna get a, yeah, you, you're going to get a very strong email. My friend. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> this is this is a very you strong email. With yeah. gas prices these days. <laughs> But no, but, then a woman like opened the door as I was leaving and I was like, are you open? She's like, um, I guess. <laughs> we're like, oh my God. I'll take this it. College is amazing. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's have this. Can you, can yeah. you accept this piece of paper and make yeah. sure that it goes to the right place? Oh my Seems God. Seems like I could squeak a credential through this place pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, right? Yeah. That's like, if you guys are that lax, well, yeah. I got, Maybe you I guys got aren't some, watching. I can match I can just, your. I can match your level of in, of, of intensity. We're all yeah. this we're all this relaxed. Perfect. I can do that. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh. We're competing now. <laughs> <laughs> who can out? Uh, who can out? Uh, lazy. The other one. Oh my yeah. god. Oh well, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. No, Sweet. this is fun. I'm. Um, yeah. We did the uh, the brown. No. Gosh. The uh, the Blair brothers. I just hung yes. out with uh, with Jim Brown and Brian Brown. The Brown oh brothers. We, I, I talked to Jim about um, that he should come on. He's like, "Oh yeah, you guys are talking about brothers and bands." We totally missed Jim and uh, Brian Brown of the of the of band course. Bluebird. Yes, as you know, yeah. many other musical projects after that, but that was kind of where they were best known from. I actually, I actually, um, for a small bit of time, we shared a practice space with Bluebird. Oh, there you go. Way back in the back in the aughts. Yeah, yeah. that's how I met those guys. Yeah, it's uh, it is a small world, but yeah, they I just played with uh, with Jim's band, uh, Coyotes on Peyote. They opened up for us and Reg Bloor at uh, Zebulon two nights ago. Yeah, how was that? It was I amazing. Saw the photos, it looked amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. You know, this band is uh, you know, is kind of, you know, just. Just k- kicking around something fun to do, and I I, yeah. I love the people I play with. Uh, I feel like there's some heavy hitter kind of sessiony guys and late yeah. and gals, and uh, it's really fun. So yeah, this was our fourth show. We're officially four four shows in. So are so, you playing with? Is it all the same people? Yeah, yeah. So Leslie time? Leslie Ashino of the Red Ants on oh. drums, um, uh, Scott Cornish of Front of House Hall of Fame, as well as oh, uh, amazing many other bands soft world eggies he mm-hmm. um he is playing uh second guitar and then dayron monroe of dre ted and the intelligence that's all that's also leslie plays in the intelligence is on, dayron's okay. on bass and then dave simeon who i've known since high school and he's been in so many bands his solo project was called um the daydreams he's sitting in on uh keyboards so keys oh, awesome. two guitars bass and drums this is like the biggest band i've ever played with yeah, where's the where did the uh, I mean we haven't even talked about this. How did this 
come to fruition. All of a sudden, oh. I saw that you were <laughs> you were playing that you had the Randy Randall ensemble, yeah. and I was like, "Wait a second, amazing! Who's this? I feel Who? like I should have known this." <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, if you lived more than than two hours yeah. up on top of a, a, a mountaintop, if you have before you turned into the Grinch, yeah. I would have recruited you for this band <laughs> as, as, as actually as possible. But now you you look down upon us people yes. down here and <clears throat> all you little people <laughs> with your small heart um, having fun in the sun uh, they're tinkering they're they're yes. tinkering they're ensembling <laughs> look at who are all these ensembled people um yeah so it yeah it, well so what the the story the, the real story of how it happened was uh I was booking a show for Leo Romero's band, professional skateboarder and mm -hmm. great guitarist, songwriter. Leo Romero has a band called Travis Sura, and he was going to do a record release show, and he wanted uh, to play at Permanent Records because I'd booked a show, you know, for him uh, the year before. Yeah. And so from that from that show, he met uh, Aaron Espinoza and recorded at the Ship. And so oh, he, cool. and so kind of full circle one year later as a record release show, he wanted to recreate that same bill that sort of, you know, kicked off this, uh, this record making experience. So I hit Lance up at permanent records, which is a, uh, a, a record store slash bar slash venue here in Southern California. If people aren't familiar with it, it's in the Cypress area of, um, of uh, Los Angeles right near, you know, just South of Eagle rock. And it's a yeah. very fun bar. It's, you know, you go in, it looks like a bar, but they've got records everywhere. Cool vintage records for sale. And there's a backyard area with another records sort of store set up in the backyard. And so you can play inside and outside and Leo wanted to play inside. And Lance was like, Oh, you know, ambient stuff hasn't been doing too well. I think he was kind of, you know, not so subtly giving me the hint that I, know, I don't bring enough people in yeah. <laughs> to the venue with my, with my artistic, um, um, sleeping pills of, of a, of a live set that I've been doing for the last few years. He was like, yeah, I don't think we want to do that. And I'm like, no, no, I got a band. I got a band. I can play what you need. What do you need? Like five people and some drum live drums. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I got all those things. I could do that. Just kind of just so that, cause so I can make the show happen for Leo. So I, yeah. I said I had a band without really having a band. And then, and then I had met Leslie and Dayron through this um, Operation Creative Freedom art show that happens every year, or art mural project, you know, where we make oh, right. murals. And then there's always a, a music component uh, at the Henry uh, Wirtz um, Elementary School. And so we needed a bass player and a drummer. And Rich Jacobs, this is, I'm just going to drop all kinds of names and tell the story in full. But R Rich Jacobs, incredible visual artist, uh, recommended uh, Leslie. And she brought Daron with her. And so they'd come over to jam for that project. And we learned the Rick Astley song, Never Gonna Give You Up. And so we <laughs> did all that. And uh, and it was, uh, so I met them and did that. And after the practices and they were jamming for that show, they were like, yeah, you know, if you ever want to play again, we should play more. And I was like, couldn't believe it. I was like, really? You guys want to play more music? Okay. So then once I uh, once I lied and told Lance I had a band, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll call Leslie and Daron, see if they want to be part of whatever this thing is. And then uh, Dave, I brought in because I've known him for years, and I thought, well, he's he's a good kind of just ace in the hole. I think he 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 knows things like augmented ninths and sevenths, mm. and you know words. You that always sound. need one of those people. Yeah, he could, he could yeah. tell you about you know where the turnaround is and what the re result. Hey, we'll just resolve the phrase here with this turnaround and this go to your yeah. ninth and your majors. And I was like, yes, I would love to have somebody that can say all those words. And and someone the, you can turn to and say, so wait, where do I put my fingers? <laughs> yeah, what's the next part? Just <laughs> where do I put the, my pinky? Just no, tell me my the chord. Pinky go, though? Yeah, yeah, the chords here. Okay, yeah. So then I, and so I just kind of wrote some riffs and then uh, they came over and we played those and then just sort of, you know, well, what about this? What about this? Oh, but then I brought Scotty in cause I wanted Scott to play the rhythm part so I could just be solo, man. I can kind of sing and yeah. solo. I figured I was, I was, you know, being true to my honest self. If I could say that, you know, that's a, I've been rhythm guy for so long. I was like, I'd like to have another rhythm guitar play, player so I could just kind of sing and, and do melodies. Yeah. And so Scotty selflessly um, stepped up and did that. That's amazing. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been, been great. But, but, it, but as soon as Scott sits in, he starts playing leads and doing counter melodies and things. And I'm back on rhythm, you know, it all kind of yeah. is shifting around. Oh <laughs> like, God, I like riffing. Yeah, but, it's, if I wait, riff, but it's this easier is to my sing. Band. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of hard to solo and sing at the same time, too. <laughs> so it was kind of like all works out. No, but I think that's what's been really fun. I kept asking him, like, do you guys want to change the name of the band? I kind of just put that on the flyer because I needed a name. I was like, I feel like this could very much go by a, a proper band name at some point. But I right away also made stickers. Maybe this will this will be fun. Yeah. I don't know. Is that oh, it looks good. reverse in my camera? Does that look straight ahead in yours? I made a sticker. I see it. 
That's okay. good to me. Did that one, and then and then uh, then the the sticker guy who should be a sponsor at this point. Yeah. Everybody go to stickerguy.com, <laughs> yeah. sign up for the email list because they do great uh, deals. They have like oh, a monthly yeah. deal they do. So this is the uh, the rainbow one, similar to the uh, the hyphen stickers we have. Yeah. Uh, forty, uh, I think it's like forty bucks, fifty bucks for two hundred and fifty stickers. You're right; these are like two inch by two inch, and I yeah designed it on Fonto, so it's kind of fun. I feel like that's all the merch we have now for the band. But if we maybe if we make it to show ten, I'll I'll waste money on too many T-shirts and just wear them myself for the next ten years. <laughs> yeah, it's good to yeah, have years worth of shirts. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's good to design your own your own wardrobe. Well, that's amazing, man. I love that. I love the. I love that. Um, I feel like every six months you have a new. There's always a new thing that's like no 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 now i'm uh i'm producing commercials now yeah like, i mean I, oh, I'm... Commercials. oh amazing no i'm doing like an art show at a grade school <laughs> like six months and we got all this cut stuff and i'm like this is amazing i don't have the uh i don't have the overall confidence and drive <laughs> the to completely like to drive to wing to, it to drive a new yeah to absolutely wing it but in a in an amazingly like uh, oh my god saying yes to the thing, but then actually doing it instead of saying, yeah, sure. And then going, well, mm, I would rather oh. be sitting at home. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, the, the second any one of these things really uh, makes any money or requires more time and, and, and makes, makes it worth my time. <laughs> I would, yeah. I would gladly, I would gladly drop everything and do just any one of these many projects. <laughs> any, any one of these many balls I have juggling in the air. That's yeah. sort of, it's sort of the, uh, diversification of time i have a little bit of time and everything makes yeah. even less a little bit of money if not less than the other one so it's like okay if i could i would gladly hold on to one ball and run with it much further but it's at this point in my life I, i'm enjoying the the kind of anxiety and uh and paranoia of of being a multi-hyphenate yeah. myself i guess we've never <laughs> talked about that either too why this yeah. show is called hyphenate and what that was about i think i think i've always kind of you know been in the shadows of like, well, I do a little bit of this. I do a little bit of that. I mean, I've enjoyed, you know, I like, I like to be able to say I'm a guitarist mostly, but I think as the years go on, the side hustles become more apparent of like they, everything we do. They become more of the actual hustles. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you, how is it when you say, well, don't quit your day job? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Which <laughs> one? Yeah. <laughs> Which one shouldn't I quit? Well, yeah. Tell me, please. <laughs> I should not quit any of them. I should Here's get my ten, list. I could get ten more day jobs just to kind of make everything make sense. Well, you know, it's the thing too. I think you know this. Uh, was all this thing sort of grew out of the pandemic as well. It's, I think it's no secret the pandemic really just just kicked the shit out of a lot of creatives. I think I count myself amongst those. That you know, yeah. I had a plan, I had a thought, you know, and you know, raising a couple of kids, doing creative projects into my forties. And, uh, and the pandemic said, fuck you, you are, you're not doing any of that shit. Yeah. How about, oh, you, know, you do nothing. And then you just, just yeah. worry, cry yourself to sleep at night. I was thinking, <laughs> how am I going to provide for my kids? I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So the multi, this? the multi hyphen. Give it a so. rest. Give it a rest, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that in the beginning. That was kind of nice. There was a moment there of just like, nobody's doing anything. Just anything you've ever saved, go ahead and try not to spend that in the next three months. Yeah. Those first couple, mm. yeah, I was going to say those first couple months were like, I remember being very relaxed in a lot of ways. I mean, like stressed out about the whole getting sick thing. Oh yeah, and not knowing where that's going. And but that aside, and the life older stuff, people dying and older people being at risk. Yeah, yeah. And I had done like uh, one. I had done a couple jobs right before that that were like a good little chunk of change, like in the, for a couple months. So I was like, and and plus we weren't spending any money on gas. We are only spending money on uh, uh, food, basically. And then, uh, and we were like, oh, we can go for, wait, how many? And, you know, of course, Michelle is still working. She's, she was able to still work full time from home. Were you guys still in well, Altadena when it all yeah, hit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so I just, I do remember being like, wow. Okay. This is weird not being super stressed out by work <laughs> for just like, for just that moment of being like, get to spend time with the kids. The kids school is very chill. Cause half the teachers are just like, yeah, I don't know. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Cause we'll they were third grade. Yeah. They were like third grade 
and fifth grade at the time. Mm. And so it was, they were just like, yeah, I don't, you know, do your best. You hand anything in, it's full, you know, whatever. School till 11 and then just go do whatever you want to do. Wow. But then, um, but I do have to say now, like going through the teaching thing, I was talking to Michelle about this, that, you know, going, cause I'm student teaching every day. So it's from like 10 to three thirty every day. And you just get, it's like stressful, the stressful parts, but it's such a different kind of stress. It's like stress and then you walk away and it just goes away. Hmm. I'm like, wow, I don't bring any of this stress home. When a, how does this happen? It's stressful there. Like I was like yelling at kids and threatening to send people to the office today. And, oh, wait. Was this your first, and, uh, was this your first was a fight. solo day? No, no, no. no. Okay, I've been okay. doing it for a while. Yeah. But this was, well, I've been subbing. So I sub every once in a while. So, but I sub the same classes that I student teach in. Except okay. for yesterday, I subbed at the high school, which like the high school kids just have like their headphones on. It's like a video class. And so they're editing and like Perfect. half the time I was sitting there going, do I need to be here? Or is this uh, <laughs> like, I just feel I'm like twiddling my thumbs. I'm like, God, yes. I should have brought something to do. <laughs> Legally, you have to be there. <laughs> yeah, totally. Did, were you watching? Were you, could you watch their screens, making sure nobody's putting anything else up on the screen? Yeah. I mean, that's most of it. Most yeah, of it yeah. is you're walking around going, could you please stop playing games? Yeah. What? I'm not playing games. I'm like, like I see I'm it. sitting here watching you. <laughs> no, I'm not. What are you talking about? Gaslighting you, 101. Why like are gas- you always on me? Why are you all, Well, because you're always playing video games. What do you mean, why am I always on you? Just stop playing oh. video games and I'm, I'm oh. like on your side. I'm happy that's, to leave you alone, but go oh ahead and God. close down Galaga or whatever you're going to That's going. amazing. Yeah, it is true. Like being gaslit by like 13, 12 and 13 year olds. They're like, so bad at it. That's the whole job. The whole job is getting, is like you're teaching them stuff kind of because like half of them are just like, every time you do something, they're like, I hate art. Okay. I mean, fair enough. They're like, I did not enjoy middle school either. So I get you. I'm right there with you. I don't know what to tell you, but they're like, I'm, I don't even want to be in this class. Well, fair enough. Okay. That doesn't really change our position right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go ahead and put some of that expression onto the canvas there and we'll call it a day. I'll give you the A. Yeah. yeah. Dude, making me, art was, about hating art, making art about oh not wanting God. to be in a room. That's, this that's, is, Pretty epic, sure. Congratulations, you're an artist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hate art. I don't even want to yeah. be here. I don't even yes. want to be here. I hate welcome, life. Welcome Let's to art. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh the my gosh. Kid. Yeah, that'd be, but it is, that'd be fun. You should you should see if you can research um, uh, quotes from famous artists like Pablo Pablo Picasso. But you know, basically, cool. I, I think all art is terrible. I hate yeah. art. School's stupid. Like yeah. you, should, you should start each class with a little like um, a little quote from somebody highly respected who's who's saying the same things that the kids are saying. Like, see, you guys are you guys are right in line with the great Salvador Dali and you know Pablo Picasso. Yeah. They they've said these things. Like, do you do you relate to those things? Perfect. Yeah. You are an artist. Never be- never believe an art teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at this thing. Look, this is just a uh, this is just a urinal on its side. <laughs> the guy wrote our mutt on it. What is that? Right? I mean, come on. Yeah. You, and then he made, he made millions of dollars. Who likes yeah. millions of dollars? All right, he's, everybody, everybody go do it. Yeah. He's still, he, he was still saying F you to everything at the same time. Well, I guess this is the energy I want. Now stop getting an F. I don't understand. <laughs> it's very, it's very easy in this class to get a C. Like yeah. so many of the kids, I'm like, you're making it so hard on yourself. Like you're trying so hard <laughs> to, to fail, fail this class. Yeah. Like you work harder so to fail. Hard. You work oh harder God. to fail than it would take to even just pass this I, thing. I've okay. had this, I've had this conversation with so many kids and like they're laughing and I'm laughing. That's and I'm good. like, like we actually get along really great. Like I like all of the kids that are quote unquote, the worst kids or whatever. And that have yeah. the toughest are all the kids that I'm like, yeah, listen, you guys are going to be fine because you don't trust authority. You're like, you stick up for yourself all the time and you're learning how to lie. This is what you need to be an adult. <laughs> like you guys are going to be fine. <laughs> Those are life I skills. Yeah. yeah. I can't say that you're maybe going to make a lot of money. Cause if you're doing this in, to your boss, that's probably not the best thing, but personally you're probably going to be fine. Oh but my that, God. 
<clears throat> oh, oh, sorry. I just, just reminded me. Have you seen the the guy? It's an Instagram clip, but it's like a a, a presentation he has on on lying and good employee. Like how much you can lie and still be a good employee. It's like, <laughs> if you lie this much, you'll probably be fine. But if you lie too much, then they're going to promote you over to sales. And if, right. and, and if you lie, to, and if you really keep lying there, you're eventually going to become an executive or so. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like you can, yeah, you can get away with it to a certain degree. And then you're either going to get fired or get promoted. Oh, totally. And I was yeah. working with someone the other day and they they were like, you know, we were working on something else, a photo shoot. And then they were like, oh, man, I sorry, I forgot I have this call. So they had to go and sit on the call. And then they went into, like, corporate mode, you know, like, hey, how's it going? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And just fully, you know, into call mode and did the whole thing. And everybody was on there. But you could hear the call and everybody was in call mode. Right. Mm. Like, oh my God, thank you so much. This is amazing. What we're going to have to do is follow back on. So let's make a schedule, you know, and everybody yeah. has their thing. And then they all hang up. And we're both like, yeah, it's crazy to be on those calls because nobody wants to be there. And everybody knows their role. And everybody has the like, okay, now I get on the call. This is how I talk. This is how I do. We're going to get this thing done. And this is how this like uh, machine works and we move from this stage and that's how we move to the next stage unless in instead of everybody just going like yeah um we're good everyone's good <laughs> we're cool Every, we all have stuff to do right yeah okay got it let's go but it yeah. is true it's like you get that the uh yeah the is amount of lying. i've never heard about it that or thought about it that way but that <laughs> amount of lying that you need to do to be successful is like a very fine line yeah, you're like out, right. Who you're lying to and what you're lying about and whether they know you're lying or whether they expect you to be lying no matter what. It's like Right. Just tell me I'm amazing. Tell me I don't even care if you think I'm amazing. Tell me I'm amazing and we're good. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, well, well that's just that's just some type of, you know, civil uh discourse lessons. Yeah, I'm just exactly. like you know, playing in a band like, "Hey, you're awesome. You band's yeah. sounded great. Man, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Can I borrow your amp? Can I borrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys were great. Yeah, I love we it. should play together. How many people do you guys have coming to your shows? Yeah, like we none. Do, yeah, How many right? you got? None. Cool. That's yeah. perfect. We'll both we'll perfect. bring zero people. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's so funny. But I also I also just think about it too. I think with now with the computers and all this kind of stuff, you know, it's like there is a level of almost like you know theatrical in theatrics in a way, you know, where it's just like, I'm prepared for my role. I am dressed from the waist up and I am camera ready. And I know my lines. I know what I'm supposed to say. I know when I say it, I know the rhythm of it. it's kind of an improvis improvisation sketch, but you're like in character and mm -hmm. you do it and you film yourself on screen, interacting with other people. And then you turn it off and you just got sweatpants and Doritos and <laughs> a cat and a dog and uh, go make more you know, coffee. Someone I think it was uh, Michelle brought up the other day that she was talking about how she had never realized how weird it was, like that you never, now every time you get it in a conversation online, you watch yourself talk. Oh, yeah. So you have a mirror the whole time. So you're even if you're looking at everyone else, you're constantly looking at yourself like, oh, how am I? Okay, wait, how am I sitting? How am I? <laughs> And that, that, that yeah. wasn't a thing before. Like you're not like everybody doesn't have a mirror next to them to go like, how, how do uh, I look when I talk this way? And that how it can be, um, that's terrible. Just how, how weird that, I mean, it must be changing the way that we communicate. Like you're looking into a mirror and also looking at someone else the whole time. It's very strange. I try to, yeah, I try to ignore myself as much as possible. And that's just, just a life. Life. that's a life. Yeah, just <laughs> in, in life, I stopped looking in mirrors about forty pounds ago. I was like, this this mirror thing is really bumming me out, man. I really don't want to see it. Like, I'll get I'll get the toothbrushing kind of face mirror. I could do this, but the whole body mirror stuff. I was like, no, no, nobody needs to see this. I don't even want to see this anymore. So you um, just have a little little tiny mirror to peer yeah. into. So yeah. yeah, I'm good. Nothing on my teeth. All right, yeah. I'm looking good. Um, well, the 
Oh, I don't know where I forgot, one. but yeah, it's 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 completely it's completely changed. Oh, well, that's what I was gonna say. The um, I'm so stoked though to not drive where for bullshit meetings. Though I remember, I mean, you know, oh, from yeah. being living in LA, you'd like drive to Santa Monica at three o'clock to meet with somebody that didn't want to meet with you, and like you're they they just check you off their list. Like, okay, yeah, we met. I'm like, why did I come all the way out here? Yeah, you, they were never gonna do hire me or work with me or do anything or I don't yeah. want to work with them. Why did we, the driving for drain and then sit and you wait and you get a coffee and you do a thing and they get you a bottle of water, you know, yeah. I, I, it, there was, there was, seems like there was just a whole infrastructure of just people filling days with just random meetings that did nothing. I mean, to be able to just jump on a call and be like, Oh yeah, this isn't going to work. This is great. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. We're Perfect. Done. No one had to leave. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to pay for parking, walk yeah. around, see security guards, go through a thing, go up into a building. Yeah. You just have to have a nice shirt. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And a good think, microphone. That's it. I think, I think that seems a lot nicer and a lot easier than, <laughs> than that other kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. What did you think of, uh, uh Donnie Blair? I mean, you, you heard Zach oh. Blair and, and Guar and, and rise against and, and Hagfish. Now we kind of saw the other side. I was really stoked that Zach, well, when I, after I got done talking with them for that episode, he's like, you got to talk to my brother. That's who you really got to talk to. And I, was, I love that he was just promoting his brother and really just, you know, just stoked on him. Like he's the real, he's the real deal. And then it was, it was, it was great. I researched him for a little bit and we talked and really just, just such a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, it sounded like they're <clears throat> they're growing up as brothers. Where like, where like, uh, they're attached at the hip from the very beginning, and that their dad. I mean, I thought it was so cool. Their dad was a um, uh, radio DJ, disc jockey. Yeah, like, I kept thinking of WKRP. DJ. Yeah, totally. Johnny was it Johnny Disco or what was what was his name? Howard uh, Hessman's character. Yeah, I don't Johnny remember. Fever. Johnny Fever. Yeah. And he brought that up and he's like, oh no, yeah, my dad said it was very similar to that actually. <laughs> but oh. then, and then I loved that um, he was talking about music with his parents and he was like, his mom loved soul or their mom loved soul and that uh, dad loved rock and they're like, really? They met in the middle at Steely Dan. That's <laughs> Which is so funny because I've been listening to more Steely Dan lately only because Lila started listening to Steely oh, Dan. Oh no, it's infected your house. You have a Steely well, Down Dan bug in your house. Well, she came home once and she was like, "Dad, do you know this band Steely Dan?" And I was like, "What? Wait. <laughs> Why? Why are you saying you know this? this? How do you know this band Steely Dan?" She's like, "What do you mean? Are they a popular band?" <laughs> oh, like, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. they, you know, it's like you see something on TikTok or or whatever, you know, like someone recommends mm -hmm. it or you hear a song or whatever. And so she just put Steely Dan songs on her playlist and was like a big Steely Dan fan. For like oh, my months. God. Was How like, fun. Oh, my God. She got like, I printed her out like a Steely Dan poster from the internet. And like she has it on her wall and all this stuff. And um, uh. so it's really funny because then when I listen to Steely Dan, I'm like, that's one of those bands that if you played their top 20 songs, I probably know all of them. And I never would have picked like, oh yeah, this is Steely Dan. I would have gone with like, I don't know, Chicago, Hollow Note. Uh, I don't know any of those bands that are just like a couple guys doing a thing. Well, it's kind of They're white. Like, it's, it's, it's white like soul white, music. Yeah, white you know, blue soul, white soul or but not, jazzy yeah. kind of dance, like not disco, not rock, not. It's like in the middle of everything. adult oriented Michael rock. Michael McDonald. AOR. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, um, yeah. So that I thought that was really, I thought that was really funny. But I thought, I mean, I thought it was cool. Like, you know, listening to those guys and it, they're our age, and like, just kind of going through the whole record thing, like talking about liner notes, how they used to just study every single band in the liner notes and who was in the band and what instruments they played. And he played Rick and Bacher because the guy from yes played a Rickenbacker Rickenbacker and then Cliff Burton. And I mean, I just think that that's such a, an interesting time because there was so much, it was so romantic because you didn't, it's not like YouTube. Now you can go on YouTube and see what your bands are doing maybe once a week, you know, mm -hmm. like see them in real time. But I think back then, like if you wanted to find information about Metallica, good luck. <laughs> you know, you'd have to watch like that the, one tour video they had. You know, they're all just drunk and wasted backstage. Yeah. Or or, but but anything new, you know, it's like any oh, band, right. they would only do an interview when an album was coming out. So they'd do their round of interviews. 
and you'd have to find the magazine and read it or see like one interview a year on MTV or something. And that was it. And so it was such a different time of like finding those liner notes and, and looking and finding these little Easter eggs of information. Like, wait, who's that? Who's that producer? What's that? Oh my God. Wait, that's the same person that produced this other thing on this. One of the other 12 records that I have. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. That's funny. But I mean, definitely, you know, the internet's great for that kind of stuff. The internet sort of rabbit holes you could fall down and you can get, you can, you can research something so much quicker than you could have back then, you know, it was definitely like, uh, you know, the in terms of, yeah, just, just stay, uh, like discogs or like going down a thing and finding out yeah. this person did that, did that, did that, did that. Um, but, but yeah, I think it's all, it's just the stoke. It's being stoked and being inspired by totally. something, you know, I think that's, that's the, that's the funniest part of it all. It's fun to see. I think this generate, I don't know what is Lila's generation called or like just, are there, is she Z? Is she part of the Z thing or no? Yeah, Most I think are. she's Gen Z and then still in there. Gen Alpha. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So I missed There's the something. Z's. Yeah. But it seems like the Z's are cool. Like they got, they got a, a love for nineties rock. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of know. like how we had a love for sixties and seventies. I think mm-hmm. it's like that same time. It's like the 25 year time difference or 30 year time difference. Yeah. 25, I guess that, that yeah. they're like, they like that. But I think it's also the weird thing that the internet has done is that it's condensed time into like time doesn't mean anything with culture. So it's like you dress like whatever your nineties quote unquote, but that doesn't really mean anything because it could be anything like that could mean anything like dirty shoes or like, (laughs) like it's not as specific like, Oh, the sixties or the seventies were bell bottoms and flowers and disco and that yeah. was the 70s now it's just kind of like well yeah you could be into the 90s but then you're also into these new bands that sound like the 90s but then also you're into all the bands that the 90s wanted to sound like so you're also into like david bowie and you're also in, but then you also listen to hip-hop and you also know every taylor swift album <laughs> and you also know all the new kids on the block songs because those are all coming back and then britney spears as well but then you also might know a corn song that's incredible right yeah i mean just what, <laughs> it's crazy what, it's what is yeah what is required in cultural literacy you know what i mean just in kind of in contemporary culture like what is it really i mean we you know we 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 you know we reflect on 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 our time growing up but you know it was the, it was the couple couple TV stations, you know, a little bit of oh, a little yeah. bit of cable, a little bit of radio, <clears throat> and then and then you fill in with your, you know, kind of DIY sort of punk or subculture of your choice, and you know, kind of as much as you can get through zines or record liner notes, all that stuff. And now, yeah, yeah. it just feels like yeah, it's it's nonstop. Everything's well, available, but yeah, how do you how do you construct a uh, a culture out of it all? I guess it just naturally happens. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't. I don't know, even being at school, I mean, it's, again, we're in like a very small town. So it's like, Mm. there's kids that are, um, that's like the emo kids in the, but it seems like everybody kind of gets like those lines aren't drawn as heavy as they were. Like you have the jocks and the emo kids, but like the jocks are also kind of skaters (laughs) and the skaters also kind of ride scooters. And then... (laughs) And then there's like the, like the hicks, like the kids that ride motorcycles and stuff, but they're also it's kind of the metal kids too. And then like every, like it's very much more, it seems, I mean, I'm in a middle school, so I don't know. They're not like dry, like going into. Yeah. Into full like identity crisis mode groups, but it seems like things just happen pretty fast and they're like definitely terminology and stuff like <laughs> one word will start on monday and everyone will use it till only till friday and then the next week it's just gone wow like some like random random like tumbleweed like, of, of uh linguistic sort of like anachronism just happened and like nope it's over with gone but they literally all start doing the same thing yeah. on the same day right. like this it's like launched. this one like there was like a like a um Everyone was trying to do really loud high fives one day. Like, right. But literally one person was doing it in the first period or two people. And then they were getting each other going. And then by the third period, 
totally different kids. Every single kid out in the hall is trying to do these like really loud high fives. And then I found out it was like an internet thing. Sure. I don't know. Lasted for four days. And then it was gone. All these kids were like playing, like all of a sudden all these kids came in with bloody knuckles. Oh, like, Ooh, I remember playing bloody knuckles, <laughs> but they were all playing this, like some bloody knuckles game with quarters. I don't know. But all of a sudden Whoa. I'm like, why that's he- is everybody that's heavy. like not literal like, bloody knuckles? Keeping, we would just, yeah. Keeping, keeping their hands <laughs> under their bags and you get out and they had bloody knuckles. I'm like, Oh, oh it's fucked up. Idiots. Well, well I, like I, I like how you said life was going pretty fast. You know, if you don't stop, stop and look at it sometime, <laughs> you just might miss it. It would just miss it, man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you still doing here? Go, the movie's yeah. over. Go, get out of here. Get out of here. No. Oh, I did like, I went, I did want to say, talking about 14, 14 year olds, uh, I think one of the funniest, the funniest moments in the interview, maybe I shouldn't even give it away. Maybe I should no. set it up and then not give it away. But it's when um, him and his brother or the brothers are talking about like starting the band. They have to start their band, and it's during the early '90s, and they're and they're just sitting down and talking. And he's like, "Man, <clears throat> this just it sucks because um, we're gonna have to wear spandex." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Because I thought that I I just ruined it, so it's, it's yeah. fine. You just gotta go listen to it, but that. Um, when he just, they're talking about starting the band and, and I think it was Donnie who was saying like, well, what are we going to wear? Like, what are we going to wear as a band? Like, what's going to be our thing? And that Zach's just like, and, and he goes on this whole thing of like how all these bands like Skid Row and all these bands are wearing spandex. And then I thought, I thought he was going to, like Zach was going to say, there's no fucking way we're wearing spandex. But then he was just like, man, we're going to have to wear spandex. And he's like, no, we can't do it, man. We can't do it. And he's like, we're going to have to. And I just thought of like two 14 year old, 13, 14 year old kids who have like, who are going to be the biggest band in the world, just going like, dude, we got to suck it up because this is what it takes. <laughs> I thought that was so amazing. Just the visuals of that was just yeah. like, wow. this is what it takes if we're going to be a I big like band. That's like, we're... that's like the starting of a movie right there. <laughs> yeah. So you think like two kids? <laughs> two kids, like all right. Well, let's go get our mom's spandex. Yeah, what do right. we need? Maybe some makeup, totally. some hairspray. Accidentally all buy right. pantyhose instead. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, so, yeah, I mean, have you ever seen pictures of uh, Pantera with their first their first record? They oh were... well, I heard you talking about it, and then you guys oh, yeah. talking about oh, Pantera. About okay. Yeah. So on my way home today, I was like, I haven't listened to Pantera in a long time. <laughs> so I put on Vulgar Display of Power. Oh yeah. And that's, I was like, wow, this really was a heavy record. What's funny, yeah, I missed I missed Pantera, I think, in in in, in my you know, junior high run, but I really liked yeah. White Zombie. And now oh, going yeah. back and listening to Pantera, I was like, it's the same band. Like I yeah. don't understand how the how everybody could just rip each other off and be friends. Like, you guys are great, you sound just like us. Like yeah. great. Let's go on tour together. Awesome. <laughs> they were, we're more like, but we have dreads and you guys are just metalheads. So we're cool, right? Like we got this whole like <laughs> yeah. lost out in the desert for four months thing and started a band. Yeah, that's a totally uh, different band. Yeah, totally. Yeah, let's go. Uh, oh, it's so funny. Yeah, no, Pantera is definitely a weird one. I don't know. I never, Yeah, but I then quite I remember. didn't realize, I forgot that they were from Texas. And so then right. it was cool that he had, he's like, oh, well, of course, because the guy who was the singer in our band sang in a metal band who used to play with Pantera when they were younger. Whatever. So I thought, yeah, all of those, I mean, he, they definitely had all of those stories about like once they got in um, like kind of into a scene or what were they, or they got taken out by descendants, right? Is that what it right. Was? Yes. Yeah. Bill Stevenson and everybody. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And then later all, I think, mm-hmm. and got kind of like taken under their wing. And um, it is pretty amazing. Like once that happened, like all of a sudden they're like, well, now we're going to Europe and now we're like, you get that one kind of like someone co-signing for you. Some you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, no, that's awesome. amazing. I mean, they have amazing stories, both of them about just like keeping going in music in all different sorts of ways. And then one of them being in Guar and that like going the, the uh, rise against and then going in the metal route and then 
the other one being in Toadies. Yeah, I know. I hadn't listened to Toadies in a long time either. I was listening to that to that record. That I could yeah. only yeah kind of find the one that was yeah, you know, but all the hits were from the nineties. Yeah, yeah, and those that's... bands that still just like now the nineties are like when we when I was a kid and my parents took me to go see like the Platters. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, Frankie oh, we used to go, Yeah, yeah, we used to go see this band when we were like in high school, and it's like, oh my god, that's the same amount of time that now like '90s bands are like Smashing Pumpkins. It's like, oh yeah, like me seeing a band from the late '60s when I was a kid. <laughs> did Did you see their uh, auditioning new guitarists for, Sm- for Smashing saw, Pumpkins? Did I you, saw did, a bunch of memes did you, about it. But... Did you didn't turn in your app application? You're not ready to do it. <laughs> No, I knew so. I, I knew someone who used to play bass for them for a while, <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know about her story. She was there for a while. Yeah. I've heard that um, it's probably not the easiest uh, easiest gig emotionally, but you know, it's just <laughs> that's just coming from <laughs> coming from uh, my uh, just ascertaining what's yeah. going on. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's interesting to see. Yeah. Well, maybe I could add another guitarist to the Randy Brown ensemble. Yeah. Maybe maybe Billy Corgan's onto something or three guitarists. Yeah. I remember I saw, more. I saw Modest Mouse play in like, I don't know, early 2000s, 99. Sometime, and they had like six guitar players on stage. <laughs> so they just really? kept adding more and more guitar players. Did you ever see them with like. Yeah. Yeah. Huge... I saw them. I, well, I'm not, I, let's see. I saw Modest Mouse. They played at our student bookstore oh. in 1995. Oh, built that... to spill. It was Built to Spill, Modest Mouse, and this band called Mars Accelerator. And they came over. It was during the wintertime. And um, Modest Mouse's uh, van broke down. And so Built to Spill had to play second. And then um, I think there were like 15 people there. I don't know, 20 people. <laughs> and it was amazing. And it was like, oh my God, this band, Modest Mouse, they're amazing. But we are all knew Built to Spill already had the uh, Movies of My Dreams uh, song out. Oh, okay. And, uh, and so I saw them then. And then we saw them in uh, Portland later in the late, like 98, 99. And it was when Isaac was going through something. I don't know. It was like an hour and a half late. And then he came out and could barely stand up. No. And, uh, this is, this is a bit rough. Damn. And then I saw and then I saw them at um, Ain't No Picnic. Oh yeah. In in uh, two two thousand. Yeah. Was probably my first year here. So it was like them, and then um, it was the first year of Mars Volta. I think maybe. Okay. Mars Volta played and Blonde Redhead and Jimmy Eat World. Yeah, it was a, it was like one of those big, big years. Like, wow, oh, these bands are big now. But that was the last time I saw. No, that would have been later than that, like two thousand two, probably. Yeah, no, because I, I saw them at the drive-in at that. This ain't no picnic. I think the second one, not the one that Sonic Youth played, but the, so, the yeah, that was the first one was ninety nine, then two thousand, I think, at the drive-in okay. played. So yeah, so maybe yeah, maybe built a spill played. I don't know. I don't know. It all blends together. But yeah, yeah. Wait, but yeah, the the band but, with a lot of guitar I, players. That's. I don't think I saw them with with uh, that many guitar players. Maybe okay. they only had three at that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Just more guitarists. Yeah, just, just put more guitarists on stage. It'll just sound better. Yeah, that was that was, that Modest Mouse show, that first one was actually one of my my um I have a couple of worst photo moments and one of them is that one because I had my camera and I decided to bring my like crappy video lens like like um fisheye lens Mm -hmm. to that show and i had like 10 frames left probably and i was like this is amazing i'm gonna take these cool trippy uh photos that just turned out blurry and horrible oh and i have nothing i have no built to spill photos i have like (laughs) one photo of isaac that looks like he's all the way across the room because i have like because it's one of those old skate it was like one of those screw on skate Oh Skate, yeah, fish eye things. Fish eyes that, where you have to be like two inches from circle. their face. Yeah, oh my God. It's like the full <laughs> circle with the black corners and everything. And then like that's the photo. That's the camera I chose, or my, the lens I chose to bring to the modest mouse that built the spill show, where I was literally standing like four feet on the front of the stage. Oh my God! No yeah. photos. No that's photos. Good. 
good photo yeah. moment. Well, that's a good that's a good way to learn the lesson. Yeah, bring the bring the right gear for the job, right tool for the for the right yeah. job. Oh, I didn't learn the lesson. I have so many bad <laughs> photo stories since then, like just horrible decisions. Big oh. moment. I think I need a shirt that says "Big Moments?" Question mark. Horrible equal horrible decisions. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's so funny. A that's great yeah, yeah. cool That's all right well yeah i think uh next week i have uh, i have andreas uh de Troff on do you know andreas Ooh, yeah yeah i saw andreas just a couple months ago yeah randomly. oh yeah. that's fun yeah i think he's in new york now i think he moved oh really but yeah i had him on early this was an early one i recorded when it was first just kind of trying to find friends i could sacrifice to the microphones <laughs> and just figure out if this if it makes any sound at all um amazing so yeah yeah i think that'll be the next one and then uh yeah i don't know i want to start coming up with more themes for for the months so i have a couple ideas but cool. i gotta i gotta interview a few more people and yeah we sort of start to start to get it together for something so until then i we still got some more more to burn through from the last yeah, batch excited. and then want to keep yeah just keep keep it going but yeah it's fun it's going good so far yeah well i'm uh, excited to be a part of it yeah yeah, it's awesome. Um, very cool. All right. Well, uh, onwards and upwards. I will see you uh, next week, and we'll discuss uh, Andreas, and yeah. uh, and maybe I will have some kind of new fashion piece to uh, to show off. I gotta hit the Let's fabric see. store. We can we can have a poncho off. Joanne's fabrics. <laughs> see who can come up with the best poncho next time. <laughs> I love it. I, I think I can really could get away playing playing this playing a show with this. Hey man, you can do whatever you want. It's your band. Your name it's, is in the title. It's eponymous. It's my world. Yeah. 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 It's my go. world. You just have to live in it. <laughs> All right. See All you right. next week. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Randy. Bye. Bye.